Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy. You know, ever since I kind of quit doing regular live streaming on the internet, it's actually given me a fantastic opportunity to actually go out and explore all sorts of different video games. You know them, you love them. Uh, I don't think there's a person in this generation that like doesn't play video games at this point, And if they do, then they probably touch too much grass. Not that that's a bad thing, it's whatever, but I've always had a massive fascination with video games, you know, I've kind of been surrounded by video games my entire life, and it's always really been interesting to see the lengths to which video games can go and what exactly defines a video game. I mean, as someone who used to be massively into a lot of visual novels, uh, something that a lot of gamers out there do, that don't even classify as video games, I understand the, the distinctions that need to be made of what exactly counts as a video game. But the game I wanna talk about today uh, is definitely a game. It's just not your regular video game. And I'm kind of late to this game as well. I only just really found out about it, even though I'm sure it came out like three or four years ago from my understanding and this is a game that i have been playing for a very long time how long you think uh 30 hours 50 hours 100 hours 500 hours no think more like 400 days that's right i'm going to be talking about a video game that has kind of become i guess a little bit infamous in the uh indie game world and it's this game called the longing and let's just say it is not your average video game essentially what the longing is is a kind of uh time simulation game where time plays a massive factor into what you can do and what you need to do in order to complete the game. It's kind of structured like your standard 2D side scroller uh, following this little tiny little goblin character where he wakes up uh, next to a king that has been petrified in its state and the king tells uh, this little creature called the Shade, hey you have to wait 400 days for me to uh, sleep and rest so that I can get my powers back in order to reign supreme over this world. And so you play Play as the shade where you're essentially trapped in this underground maze or labyrinth and you have to wait for time to pass. Now during that 400 day time limit which is actually connected to real time and, and I think that's a really interesting thing is the fact that the moment the game loads up there is this countdown at the top of the screen that counts down 400 days in real time and this timer actually keeps going even with the game turned off so to all of you like animal crossing players who are thinking like oh i'll just change the in-game system to like change the date so i can advance 400 days no it doesn't actually work like that you literally have to wait 400 days for it and during those 400 days uh you can kind of explore this labyrinth and uh what's really cool is that there are certain inaccessible areas when you first start the game whether it's due to a stalactite that you have to wait to fall or like you literally have to wait for like moss to grow in order to like jump down this ledge and when i say you have to wait for these things to happen uh we're not just talking like a couple of hours although there are some like doors and entrances where you have to wait a couple of real-time hours in order for it to open up uh, some of these can take upwards of like a month not only that, but uh, this map that you are able to access, like the full map, is massive and the character doesn't necessarily move like Sonic. No, in fact, it is one of the slowest walk cycles in video games ever. I, I guarantee there is not a single video game that has a walk cycle that goes slower than how fast the shade walks. To get from one area to one area, you can't even like fast travel or anything. So if you're in one side of the map and you need to get to the other side of the map, you need to walk that at the slower snail pace that the shade walks at. And some of these trips can take like 20 30 minutes to get across it's it's a big map with a slow walker now i already know that for people who have never heard of this game and just hearing my description of the game you're probably thinking to yourself joey why the hell would you even talk about this game this sounds like an absolutely terrible video game and at first when i played this game and i heard about it from aki who was that one who actually told me about it i really wasn't sure what to think about this game i mean you know i'm a bit of an open-minded gamer i'm down to really try out any kind of video game and i'm i live with the philosophy of well, you know, how are you going to know if you don't like it if you don't try it? So I jumped into the game, I watched a couple of cutscenes to like set up the story, and I started playing a couple of hours of it, and I very quickly realized 
why this game was so cool. And there's a lot of uh, videos online talking about it way better than I can. This is just me kind of, uh, you know, giving my personal experiences with this game uh, because it weirdly did leave a very profound feeling, uh, especially once I completed the game as well. If there's one thing you need to play The Longing or even get to one of the multiple endings in this game is patience, which I think is a really difficult thing to muster up, especially when playing video games, because I feel that with a lot of video games, you're almost kind of rewarded for going as fast as possible or to just like blitz through the game. I mean, look at the whole like speed running community, for example, a community that I've been following for as long as I've been, you know, playing video games and as long as speed running has even existed. I freaking love watching speed runs. I tried to learn how to speed run a couple of my favorite games in the past, realized I wasn't gamer enough. <laughs> but I think what's really interesting is that this video game, The Longing, almost goes the complete opposite direction to any kind of video game ever, in the sense that you are rewarded for being patient. You are rewarded for waiting. And in between that time, there are a lot of other things that you can do, which also take up a lot of time, but you are also rewarded for sticking around with the game. Because of course there is something really satisfying when you're able to like blitz past a certain level of a game or, you know, beat the timer to get to uh, the next part of the game, for example. You see that in a lot of video games, especially recently, but there is a also a different feeling when, you know, you, you grab your pickaxe and you start chipping away at a piece of crystal that you can use to decorate your little abode in the game, but the actual chopping down of the crystal takes like 40 minutes in real time. Like there were genuinely some moments where I would, you know, put myself in this position of getting the shade to do these extremely time consuming activities, which I didn't even know what at that point was even like, worth you know at that point in the game like I didn't even know if like me doing this arduing task was actually going to advance me further in the game or not I just had to try it out for myself what I found is that regardless of whether it actually led me somewhere new or not or opened up a new path for me or not it was really rewarding when I actually managed to do it and I think that's the most profound statement that this game uh, has given me personally is the fact that you know it really does kind of shine a light on just how much we take for granted of things in the moment and really lets you kind of think about just in reality how slow or fast time really does move and I think as well what was also amazing is that you know it really makes you empathize with the main character you were playing with because that main character unlike almost every other video game doesn't experience the flow of time in the same way that you do. Like literally this 400 day timer is going at the same rate as 400 days in the real world. So the shade is essentially living out the same life as you and in vice versa, you are living out the same time frame as the shade. And at the end of that game, because you have kind of shared that experience together, it really makes you feel like you have this connection towards this character. And I think that's really special. I think I think if any like piece of media, you know, whether it's a video game or an anime or a movie or anything like that, lets you have that kind of real uh, emotional attachment and personal attachment to something that you are following, I think that is a really well-crafted storytelling method. Oh, and uh, also in the game, uh, in order to pass time, uh, you can actually sit down and read books. And one of the books that they have in the game is the entirety of the Moby Dick novel, uh, which I actually used as an excuse to finally read Moby Dick. Pretty good book. I can see why it's one of the most famous books of all time. So thanks, Longing. And might I just say as well, uh, the game is certainly no walk in the park either, especially again, because there are multiple endings in this game with there being a couple of bad endings that you can get in between the time and a true ending, I guess, a true ending, which I actually sat through and managed to get, but not without looking at a bunch of Wikipedia articles, because for one, this game is incredibly cryptic. Like there is a lot of, I guess, hints, very subtle hints on how you can 
advance the game in certain ways or get past certain ways or open up a path to get to a certain ending but this game is so incredibly cryptic that apparently as of me recording this video apparently there is actually like a true true ending or an alternate ending which no one has been able to figure out yet they just know for a fact that it exists somewhere because they've seen context clues in the game that lead to a different ending but as of right now nobody has been able to achieve it and you know i think that's just really rad like i think i think a video if a video game can get you to like really take the time to explore the world and really sit with it i think is a great example of like a slow burner and look i'm not expecting everybody watching this video to be like oh man i'm gonna go play this game now because obviously this game isn't made for everyone and if you are the impatient kind of person then i definitely don't recommend this game because uh I, I can see people dropping this game after like two minutes. But just for you impatient people out there who do want to give this game a go, you don't have to wait the full 400 days in order to get an ending. In fact, the only ending, there is only one ending that requires you to sit through the entire 400 days, and that's not even the true ending. Like, I almost don't even want to call The Longing a video game because it's it's more like an, an interactive art project. Like, it almost just redefines what people consider a video game and i'm pretty sure that's what the creator of this game or the creators of this game also intended this game to be like it it's intended to be a very uh, obscure interactive art project more than like a standard video game and hey i freaking appreciate it i think it's super rad it's it's super risk taking but the people who have this played this game have vouched it to be a really interesting and profound experience and i am just another one of those people oh and uh also uh yes uh people have uh done speed runs of this game and have beaten it in under two hours which uh I don't know how you would do that, but speedrunners are always proving the limits to human capabilities, so good on you guys. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about this game because I did really find it interesting, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm always open to like trying out these like kind of newer, weirder, you know, indie titles and stuff, stuff like that. Like, I have actually been playing a lot of different like kind of indie games of this kind, and I've really been enjoying it because it's, you know, I've played a ton of video games before of all sorts of different genres, but it's always nice to see something that you've never experienced or that is is entirely refreshing i'm always open-minded to you know trying out all sorts of different things so if you do have any suggestions for like weirder titles indie titles not even indie titles just like weirder video games that are like kind of redefining the norm then uh, i love to let you uh, i love you to let me know down in the comments below and if you have played the longing um let me know how you thought about it uh because it really did kind of make me realize that Time is a very precious thing and patience is a virtue. And it really made me kind of appreciate the now. It really made me appreciate the time that I do have and the inevitable time that I have left. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here. Subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. Over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one. Links to my social media as well as my clothing brand nonsense down in the description below. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.